three of this lead off best of three of the day navi us looking to get past team empire empire though well this is just the front end of a double header for them and they would love to make it a 2-0 day given that their standings of the d2l right now certainly could use some improvement i'm your host aaron ac navi chambers joined by Trav as always for the broadcast and you know i think i've seen both of these teams be absolutely schizophrenic now in this series in both in both cases game one we saw empire Get off to a great start. Looked like they were going to be able to just snowball like hell off of a Yoki Naga that was really well farmed and a really good timing. And then they just kind of threw. But, I mean, it, it's a little bit more than that. Arise kind of came through with some MVP plays as well. And that put them over the top in a game that ended very abruptly compared to what we all expected. Then in game two, Navi, Navi US looked US to be doing well. And they just didn't follow through and capitalize on the momentum they had. And suddenly you have an unbelievably farmed silent on the Wraith King who is just barreling down mid. They take the racks. They take the win. And now game three and the draft. Well, we're going to have the Lycan, the Ogre, the Ancient Apparition for Navi, Elder Titan, Venge, Puck, and Beastmaster for Empire. I really like this draft from Team Empire right now. In fact, I've really liked all of Solo's drafts today. I think they've been really sound. The Elder Titan is, didn't work out in game one, but maybe he just had an off game because he played much better in game two. Always want to fly that is. And then paired up again with the Vengeful Spirit. It's not going to be there to counter up a swap, but Reserve I think it's time. there just for the gener in a general sense of Vengeful Spirit being a good hero. Like he's just a generally good hero. He does a little bit of everything: good stun, good roaming, good late game potential with the swap. Has negative armor for Roche. Can D push a little. He's just like God. He's like the whole total package in his support. The only thing he doesn't have is excessive range on his auto attacks, but that would be just way too much to be given to one hero. And then the Beastmaster pickup. Very, very nice pairing with specifically the Vengeful Spirit because you have auras to work with, so your team fight just becomes a lot stronger. And I'm also just a big fan of Beastmaster in general. I hope to see it mid with an offlane puck, um, but they could switch it up. I think he actually is pretty good in mid. We, I think these melee heroes in mid that are tanky but have good nukes are very popular right now. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And very popular for good reason. I mean, they, they can spend... And you and I have talked about this extensively in mid, the heroes that can spam out waves whenever things don't, you know, are a little suspicious when supports are missing, even just to control runes. These are the heroes that really seem to do the best, and it's been that way for a while. But especially currently in this meta, with the Beastmaster, though, he is such a good. He's so good as a jack of all trades kind of a hero. He gives you vision with Call of the Wild, but more importantly, in terms of how you build him, if you need a mech, guess what? He's a natural mech carrier. You want blink initiation? Not necessarily going to have to be prioritized because of the existence of Puck. Um, on this lineup, so he can skip that if he wants. Do you really need to lock down a single, a single target in the case of, say, I don't know, a Five Lycan? Then maybe you can get a Scepter. You know, he is so wide open in terms of building auras as well. Natural Vlad's Resolve carrier, time. natural Assault Cuirass carrier. He can do so much for the team to allow the rest of his teammates 
and that composition to develop out into the mid game and just take that pressure off as opposed to having so many items that are so completely core to how the hero works as a whole. So I'm with you. I like to see the Beastmaster played, and I, in fact, think he should be played a little bit more than he currently is. I'm really digging Navi US, um, their uh, composition as well, though, especially if that's a Quas Wex Invoker. Quas Wex Invoker plus Ancient Apparition is a recipe for death if you ever clump up. Team Empire's turn to Oh, pick. I almost had myself muted again, but <laughs> this draft from Navi US looks very reminiscent of, like, what was it, Star Letter 9, I think? Wait, was the last one 10? Whichever one was yeah. before the last one, where Lycan and Invoker were picked up all the time. This is yeah. when Empire, speaking of, actually, was very strong. And they came second in that one. I believe DK came first. But yeah, this is very reminiscent of that time period. Lycan, of course, not the Ogre Magi, but it was Lycan, Ancient Apparition, remaining. Invoker. Good global presence, good team fight, at least, um, with Five as far as with regard remaining. to pushing. So um, I like that. Probably a rise on Invoker is my guess. And Reserve just a, one more point on the Beastmaster. I would like to see him also get the... Um, the Necro 3. It's It seems oh, to be yeah. a trend right now when Beastmaster is picked up that you do go for a Blink Dagger, which I think now is totally fine. I think in addition to that, though, the Necro 3 is so good just because, um, for one, it's, it's a very good item to get on a Beastmaster because you have to slow from the boar. But also with the extra attack speed aura, that means more mana burn from the red creep. Yeah, the, the and, and that's exactly what I was saying previously, just in terms of of how open he is and of the variety of builds that are totally viable and totally justifiable on him in any situation. I, I, I'm like you. I don't know that the blink has to be rushed here. Um, it's always a good item. Like you said, it's kind of the trend right now to get it very, very early. We'll be scandal on the blink, silent farming the uh, Phantom Assassin, and always want to fly once again back on that Elder Titan. So they really do dig their et and for good reason always want to fly at a great game two on him game one little little to be desired i think but game two definitely went his way um with the doom pickup on navi us i think i it, this is going to be such a good game big i like both drafts like when i look i can't just pick one that i think is innately better yeah it's i am airing on the side of uh of empires just a little bit i really think that the Venge and Elder Titan combo is really strong. I think they have amazing team fight. If PA gets out of hand, he's going to have a lot of tools to help him really dish out damage. Like, you're going to have Elder Titan Aura to work, work against the Lycan. You're going to have the Wave of Terror to lower their armor by 6. You're going to have the Aura from the Venge as well. You're going to have the increased attack speed Aura. You're going to have the Call of the Wild to slow people down by 35%. Oh, I think yeah. he has a lot of help for this. And, uh, and I didn't even mention the Puck, too, with the initiation that Yoki could have. And Puck is also very, very good against like and pre-BKB, because that even though he has 650 movement speed, obviously you can't really break the coil uh, because the stun will happen. And even if you do get the BKB, if he does decide to go for an Axe, it still stuns you through that, too. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't think the Beastmaster needs to prioritize the Blink and can instead get those other middle ground items they might want like the mech like the book like uh you know whatever else they happen to desire in the early game um because they do have the puck for that initiation like i don't know that they're going to be super reliant on him in that regard i mean and, and the range on roar is actually quite large it's easy to forget just how how big it actually is um and and yeah like it's 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 long and it looks like we are ready to go as the pause is resumed Game three of Empire versus Navi US. Empire win or lose is being awaited by EG as we speak. So Evil Geniuses in action against Empire following the conclusion of this game. And let's see how the lanes take shape and who's going to be handling who. Yeah, Scandal taking the Beastmaster on into mid. And currently a dual lane look. As always, Wanna Fly is heading up the top with the puck while Solo and Silent make their way down into the safe lane. We've got three up here, so a very standard tri-lane. Ush, Waitu, and Fogged on the Lycan, the Ogre, and the Ancient Apparition, respectively, in mid. Arise, as you had called, will be taking the Voker mid, and Korok will be back out in the off lane on the Doom. Yep, hey, give me two minutes. I got someone at my door real fast. I'll be right back. Not a problem. So while he does that, we'll just take a look at how things are, if they're going to continue to hold this shape. And just talk a bit about the lane matchups. The Invoker has already got his first point into Exhort, so it will be an Exhort build. The Beastmaster should do fine here. I mean, he's, he's going to be able to last it. He can start using uh, the board to stack Ancients if he really, really wants to, just to try and get things in a decent position. 
uh, for when the laning phase does begin to back uh, to break down some. Solo and Silent are actually a really deadly combination. Um, Korok is going to be able to get levels. I don't think he's going to be able to get a whole lot more, but more than nine times out of ten anymore, you see the Doom go out in the off lane. He only hangs until the level two, two and a half, maybe three if he's having an exceptionally good lane. Then he falls right back on into the jungle to begin with. Double damage, going to be spotted by Solo. In the meantime, the Ogre Magi takes the Bounty Rune. And, yeah, the off lane again, I think, is going to be vacated relatively soon. Then they can rotate supports. They can rotate whoever they need to into that lane to just try to get them to uh, caught up a little bit. This disruptive dual lane. And that's a term that Trauf apparently took from PPD and I took from Trauf. I really dig these kind of lanes more and more the more that I see them, especially against heroes like Lycan who are so farm dependent. He shouldn't have a ton of issues, but if they can just slow him down, get their levels in, especially with the, the, the puck having the range he does and the fairly decent base attack damage, especially with a Null Talisman and the pulled Tangos as we see, he should be able to get some decent CS for himself as well. And always want to fly, most importantly, is going to be getting some decent levels. And has gone boots first, so he's really putting the harassment on the fog as we speak. And sounds like Trouth is still indisposed. But we'll keep an eye on the top lane. Could get volatile very quickly. Right now, Korok's being given a ton of room to just go pound for pound with Silent. And this is going to be the only pull they're able to execute as that camp will be blocked the next time it's set to respawn. Korok's already level two, so honestly, he's Radiant going to consider this a one lane. Up at top, again, we got to keep an eye because they are going to be standing in close quarters of each other very, very often. Mid, Scandal, and Arise going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Scandal's actually doing quite well for himself. He's got six CS to the four of the Voker. Uh, the Invoker does have two denies, but Arise, uh, or Scandal, actually has four, so he's flat winning that lane right now. In the meantime, Korok does get caught at bottom, and a woo! Barely able to survive. He's going to have a Stifling Dagger right now. Not enough. Scorched Earth is such an amazing escape ability. And he got hit with the Wave of Terror and then caught from behind as well by uh, the Phantom Assassin. He's going to have to limp on back. And he will. And we'll see if he comes back to lane. That's kind of my question. Are you going to go back in the lane and try to make that work? Or are you going to go straight into the jungle? Try to go Midas. Try to go Snowball. Build? Yoki eats a Fire Blast at the top. There's the Chilling Touch. But able to... Illusory Orb himself back to safety relatively easily. So early on, a little bit of volatility in both lanes, but no blood on the soil quite yet. And the mid matchup again, just checking in. 10 and 4 to 7 and 3. Scandal is flat out just dominating this matchup right now. And I'm back. Good. Welcome back. <laughs> so yeah, he's not doing too badly. And I, I didn't I didn't really catch uh Looks like I didn't really miss too much, but no. this hero also I didn't mention is got one of the best attack animations in the game. He's yeah. got high damage, fast attack animation. Um, he's not leveling up the inner beast, but I don't expect him to. I think this build is much better. I really hope. I think I saw him uh, draft this last time, and he went more points into wild axes and didn't level up his call of the wild level four by seven, which I think is a mistake. I think getting that level four boar is so much better than the level two boar, and he's actually taking some aggression from Arise as a pause comes out here from way too sexy, but I do think that the level 4 boar, or I should say the difference from your level 3 Call of the Wild to level 4 is way better. The boar slow goes from like 20% to, I think, let's see, what is it now? Yeah, 20% to 35%. Mm -hmm. Summons the greater boar. Yes. And <laughs> we are ready to go. As looks like whatever was slowing him down has abated. And uh, down at bottom, yeah, they actually do find it with this Sentry Ward. So, solo. Able to counter ward a bit. But yeah, Korok's been doing well down here, man. He's been left alone. They almost killed him once. But barely able to salve himself and to use Scorched Earth to get away. And now they're going to go again. And let's see if they can chase him down. Scorched Earth is so good. So good in this situation. Silent actually takes a fair amount of tower damage. Top, I'm just waiting to explode. And yep, there it is. There's a Fire Blast on the Yoki. Chilling Touch, he should be able to phase shift an Illusory Orb and does. And this has kind of been the tale of things. Aggression from the dominant lanes in both uh, top and bottom, but thus far, no one's been able to net a kill. They've been able to come close, but just not quite get there. The damage potential, though, from this Navi side, at least early on, is very strong. Like the Ancient Apparition, which he is leveling up his Chilling Touch. I've seen a lot of Ancient Apparition players do, you know, kind of a smorgasbord build where they go 1-1-1 and then like 1-2-1 one, one, and then 2-2-1, two, two, but he's maxing out, at least for the time being, Chilling Touch, which synergizes nicely 
with the Howl from Ush. So it's very, very high damage if you can keep them in place. Fog doing some point for now, and it's actually yep. going to be first blood in, in favor of Korok. Yep, was watching it. That was very gutsy. As Silent tried to engage, and it just didn't, yeah, like, it's just unfortunate. Like, he is so tanky and so survivable and tried to make it happen. But instead, feeds a first blood to a solo lane Doom with a very strong dual lane. I mean, Venge and PA is no joke, man. They can output some damage quickly. And the Venge has even got two points in a wave of terror just to help in that. But yeah, with that, Korok has his treads done. He may even consider going Midas now. What happened? I, I, I missed the tail end, or the beginning of it, I should say. I came in for the tail end. They were just going back and forth, and the uh, and Silent tried to try to engage, tried to blink in, and just ended up dying. Yeah, this this lane combo is actually... I, mean, I know it's a dual lane against the Doom, but you're right. It actually is a very good dual lane. Like, the, the negative armor with the ability to jump in there for fast attacks from PA is very good. I will say that there was an engagement, as you saw, that on the tower onto the Doom before that, where Silent was very low, and I checked both Silent and the Venge, and none of them had any more regen. So maybe that's the case. They just kind of were dwindled down by that point and didn't get to ferry any regen for themselves. Well, something worth mentioning is, you know, the, the, the stun was thrown by the Vengeful Spirit, but it's just level one. She did only put one point into it. Mm. And that's one reason why it just really didn't, it wasn't that disruptive. Yoki's now been left alone, and they have rotated three in the mid, scanned the solo. Always want to fly, there's the roar, they want to follow it, Echo Stomp. Oh, too late, too late. Always want to fly, kind of whiffed on that one. There's the magic missile to follow, they will get a rise, now it's a question of what they get back. Scandal will be doomed and will be cleaned up. The Sunstrike on the money. And here comes the Ancient Apparition, Navi's got him on the run. Chasing him back to the high ground. Solo looks to be the primary target. There's a vortex to slow him as he tries to retreat. Not enough mana for a fire blast on way two, though. He's running for the Ancients, trying to deny himself. Gets off a magic missile, thinks better of it. One more auto attack will do it. Don't need it, as they've got the fire blast that time. Always want to fly very low. Korok swooping through. They're all very low, though, and here comes Silent. Silent wants some revenge, and so does Yoki. Yoki finishes off Fog. Let's see if he can track down way two now. Behind that, we actually see a big coup de gras crit that cleans up the doom. So it ends up being three to three by the time all is said and done. And they sold out way hard just to get a Venge kill. And that really cost them as they end up losing the doom. And Korok, after he ha had such a good kill, gives a bit of gold back. That was phenomenal movement by Always Want to Fly. I don't know if you watched that. He kited that out so perfectly. He had to not only deal with the attempted auto attacks from the doom, who was faster than him, but he also had to deal with the Scorched Earth uh, damage over time as well, and he did it perfectly. It's just really, really nice jukes that are coming out. From Engagement onto a rise. Roar follows. Silent eats the sun strike. Doesn't matter. That's a rise's second death in just about as many minutes. You want to keep an invoker down, especially an exhort build? That's how you do it. He is quite a ways away from finishing a Midas, has the Glove of Haste up already. But Yoki, in the meantime, getting close to his own Blink Dagger. The big bonus for Na'Vi is that Ush does have his Vlads done. He's been left alone in that top lane for a while now, and he's top on the board in terms of CS. Down a bottom, Silence rotating back in. We'll see if they want to try to do something with Solo. Yep, and I imagine Scandal with this build. I, I think I've seen him do this again, like I said. He'll probably go for a Blink. But there, if you see the the aggression there from Silent, and when he does come in fights with a with a roar, it's very very good, and that's without extra points into the uh, the inner beast. And yeah, actually he did go for the four axes again. Still think the boar level four is way better, but wants the bur more burst damage, I suppose. So he'll get it eventually. I think he'll probably get it next level. Ush in the meantime, excuse me, Quark in the meantime has gone back to farming. That's 500 gold. I want to see if he wants to go Midas or if he wants to go Blink. I actually would really dig Blink on him oh, in bottom. this game. Bottom. Dive on the Fog. Silent trying to catch him. There's a Sun Strike. Silent actually takes a fair amount of damage. And now Korok's there. He has Doom, and it'll be so worth the Doom just to secure the kill. They can track him down. Silent trying to find a way out. Trying to use his Quelling Blade. Not going to happen. The <laughs> actually uses the... Stolen Shockwave from the Seder to secure the kill as the Blur actually did kick in there and he survived one auto attack. He has two points in the Blur and would not have been miserable to swing and miss a couple of times and watch him get away. So good call to go ahead and spin the mana. Yeah, and you can't, you can't afford to do that on, on your PA as well. Like, uh, like, you need to be a little bit more 
you need to have some more self restraint and going for a kill like that. Like, yeah, you can't get it if you get the proc, because he did get a, a, a coup de gras, coup de gras proc right away. But um, yeah, he just got a little bit too greedy. He tried to pursue for way too long, and of course, the rotation of Doom comes into play. But goes for treads here for the Doom, and I do agree. I actually think Midas again is not too bad for him. We'll have to see if that's what he wants to go for. Um, I think they still have the potential to take this slave just because Lycan is very good in late game. Doom is very good. Invoker with the power of the global presence from Ancient Apparition is very strong. So it wouldn't. I wouldn't think it to be weird if he did decide to go for a Midas. Yeah, me either. I would. I just. I, I love an early blink on a Doom so much, especially against a team with heroes like Puck and <clears throat> NPA who are so ability reliant. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat. But yeah, like. Against heroes like that, I mean, just how big in a, in a mid-game team fight is it if you get the blink initiation on a puck with a doom? Like that is so huge if you're able to pull that off. Down at bottom, speaking of the doom, Korok caught from behind by the stifling dagger, does use his scorched earth, and that's gonna allow him to get away. Another stifling dagger? No, maybe not. Solo's gonna have a chance to catch him. Got the swap on and the stun. TP coming in. The axe is doing good damage. There was a attempt to echo stomp, but Korok ends up down. And that's a very effective gank. The Doom did go off on a silent before Korok biffed it, but Lycan in the meantime, securing a kill onto Puck's head with the help of Fog. Down at bottom, they're continuing to push through. Arise is in position, but can't hold the line on his own. This should be a free tower. And Korok did buy a, a Midas recipe, so our question has been answered as far as that's concerned. And it's actually even better, I would say, for Empire that he did use the Doom there, because now he won't have it for another, what, 80 seconds or something? 60 seconds right now. Yep. So they get the tower. It's Elder Titan gets the last hit, which is good for him, obviously. He has something on the Courier. It's Tranquils, I believe. And, yep, there's the Blink onto the Beastmaster. So the initiation is going to be a little bit easier here from the side of Empire. Midas done as well. They're trying to defend this Tier 1 top. They use the Glyph. And there's going to be a one-man coil spin on Ush. Ush is going to be caught with an Echo Slam. Can they follow? There's an, yep, Earth Splitter. And Yoki comes back in. If they get, oh, such a big kill for them. And the patience on Empire, very solid. They are going to catch him from behind. Those Scandal comes in, has Roar in 10 seconds. Don't know that he's going to need it. He's trying to use the Hawk just to scout out the territory behind the trees. Yoki still kiting out this Ogre. Gets off the Waning Rift, and that's a double kill for this Puck. As they bring down the Lycan and the Ogre, and Yoki's not done. Has a blink up in nine seconds. Fog trying to make a run for it. Does not have a friendly face in sight. Heading up to the high ground. Scandal has blink right now, and they're just going to break off. Don't want to overcommit, and I like that. Instead of charging uphill into the dark, play safe. Oh, he actually almost saw him right there. I don't know if he saw him place that ward as well. But, um, yeah, Fog. I think they actually did see him place that ward. They're checking for him in the trees right there. No. Not going to find him. So, nice attack. aggression there. Very nicely played by Yoki. Just using the um, phase shift right when the AA blast came. And actually still blinked ahead after the coil and Earth Splitter hit. It was a very nice exchange of spells from him. Nicely played. Silence going with a Battle Fury build. <clears throat> At least that's what it would appear to be. Uh -huh. As he has picked up his Perseverance. And it's two Midas up on Na'Vi. So, I, Empire, I think, is going to have a fair window of opportunity to try to execute some aggression, and this is going to be them trying to do so now. Way two's over there, and Scandal gets the roar off on the Korok. Korok, can they burst him down? They can. Got a coup de grog crit when they wanted it the most. Two-time multicast on the Fire Blast on the Silent, but he is surrounded by enemies. Ice Blast will connect, and Silent dies to it. So a nice shot from Vogt. Makes it not as big a loss. Now there's going to be an Earth Splitter. Fog did get caught with the coil, though. And the follow. Still trying to do it. Yoki's actually taking tower damage. They do track down Fog. Sunstrike. Ooh. Oh, my God. So close. Yoki. Quick on the trigger. Manages to make it away. Now Ush is split pushing top. Here comes Solo. Has a magic missile. Has a swap as well. Might do so. And they think they can kill him. Now they're just going to let him go. No, he's actually going to turn and go to work. Echo Stomp is there. Solo has another stun right now. Here comes a TPN. Swap him back. And there it is. Can they catch oh. him? Ush trying to kite him. And now, oh wow, he actually didn't even spend that much time running. Sunstrike, another one misses just by a hair. Always want to fly, barely survives. Look at this. Less than 100 HP, right around 60 actually. Yeah, he oh, actually- Oh, hang on, alt, alt, alt on the way. 
Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. I think he lives. Oh, uh, it's going to get in the 90s. Let's it's see going to be it, so it, close. Is it 9% or 10? It's 10% shatter. Oh, oh, so close. Yeah. But um, that was a really sick smoke there. Sick smoke dodge, man. By, uh, no. I can't remember. I think it was actually the Venge to get away from the, the Lycan Wolves. I think the Lycan Wolves were actually going to kill him if he didn't smoke right there. Outside of the uh, Sun Strike. So here comes a... Oh, I thought he had a blink. Never mind. Just the Midas from Korok. But also, um, I believe Silent actually used his bl Phantom Strike onto his allied hero rather than the Lycan himself. And so when he blinked in there, he actually didn't get any auto attacks onto him. Which is very unfortunate. I think even just one auto attack without a coup de grace gets the kill. Would have been close. It's going to be the Battle Fury build for him. As yeah. he's picked up his Claymore. And I feel like that's kind of a shame, actually. With two Midas up on the Invoker and the Doom. They're, again, they're going to have a chance to be aggressive. But the Blink's going to be up on the Doom soon. So he's not going to be feeling the effect of that. But they still need to try to capitalize on this. Not punishing two Midas's just relegates you to not being nearly as far by, what, 30, 35 minutes in. Like, you just are not going to be able to keep up. Especially against Daya's the Doom with the one. Doom and Devour just allow him to explode in terms of net worth. I still like the Battle Fury. I think even with a Battle Fury, you can still be, you can still fight because it gives very, very good damage. And it gives you sustainability in fights too because you actually have good regen. Ice Blast comes into mid. They're pinging out somebody here. It's going to be Arise. More behind. Yep. Arise has died twice already and it will be three. They're going to end up giving up solo for it. That's a trade they'll make any day of the week. As Way Too's there to finish him off. In the meantime, Ush trying to chase down Yoki and does manage to blink Dyer's down away in the fallen. mid. They want to collapse again. It's a one for one Please as of right now. But Ush wants to make it a two for. And he is not going to dive it. Thought he might think about it with Korok coming up. Korok did finish his blink. And it looks like they just want to reset and not try to give too much back. Radiant's At 16 and a half minutes in, attack. we can see it's still a very close game. Less than a thousand gold separating these teams. The experience is resting quite literally on the zero line. So a tight one in the first 20. Yep, absolutely. But if they get some stacks up now, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say late um, Battle Fury, but just considering the lane assignments that he was up against with the solo Doom, if he didn't get killed there, I think it becomes a 14 minute Battle Fury with Treads. But as a result, now it's like a 17 minute. So not the best, but not the worst. One of those kind of situations. If they get some stacks up for him with some lifesteal, like if he goes for the Vlads next or... Maybe, I think Vlad's is still quite good for him. Uh, he can get a lot of farm with some stacks in the Ancients or elsewhere. Smoke right up the gut from Empire. Going to go on into the jungle. Arise again. Will be the target. There's the roar, the follow from Solo. That's his, what, fourth death now, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> so a tough game for him. Now... The Doom was winded up, and he does get it off. He missed with the Waning Rift, and Yoki should end up dead. There's an Ice Path. Actually, Solo does swap into it. He's the one that eats it. Earth Splitter doesn't connect on anyone. Solo being pursued, and yeah, Korok's got him. Yep. So they end up going one for one, and once again, they will trade their Venge for the Invoker any time. Yoki did survive the Doom because of that swap. I think if he uh, doesn't get swapped there, he gets hit with the Ice Blast, and he dies almost definitely. So a good play from the Venge. But do you think Empire is getting enough out of these ganks? Like, they, they're giving up a little bit to usually get what seems like a lot, but is it enough right now? Um, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't think Silent's farming fast enough. Like, I know he just got his Battle Fury, but he really needs some time to farm. So if they keep this up, it will, it will over time mount to a much better lead for them just because Silent will be farming faster with the Battle Fury. Up until this point, oh, they get a kill action on the Puck, and it's his streak, too. Yeah, they just got him in mid. Was that an ice blast? It must have been. Yeah, because Fog yeah. was there. Yeah, I think he just shot an ice blast. It just killed him while he sat under the tier one. He was really low from that last engagement. Yeah. He must have just been greedy and kind of stayed for something. Yep, I think so. <laughs> Unfortunate, but effective. As Fog tallies himself to two, two, and three. He's almost so, level 11 with that engage or that kill, too. Yep. Up at top, we're going to have another roar on to arise. And down he goes. Silent now getting a bit more active. There's going to be an engagement on the Korok. Solo has swap. Won't. No, he will use it. Tried to get back out as far as he possibly could. There's no other follow-up initiation, though. Now, Korok, though, slowed by that boar. 
can't even begin to try to chase them out. In the meantime, though, Ush with that Vlad's, he actually has a BKB already, so he is well farmed. Going to work on Roshan. Always want to fly right next to it. If he used, decides to use an Astral Spirit to check, he'll see. And the rest of Navi heading down here just to make sure he stays safe using a smoke. Yeah, he actually doesn't have enough mana to use the Earth Splitter until he pops his Soul Ring. And he actually is going to run into Way Too Sexy. He's getting fogged just a little bit. Does cast the Earth Splitter, though. Got it off, but he missed. Shanked it. So that's going to be a free Aegis for Ush. And I, I think Navi US is in great shape. They're going to be able to go to fight with Ush very soon. But... Yeah, like, I'm, I'm looking at the tools the Empire has. They have a lot of things that can account for a Lycan. Uh, with the BKB, I mean, the roar goes through, so that's irrelevant. And that's a decent tool to lock him down. But like you said, well, also PA struggles against BKB heroes because she can't blink strike. So yeah. she has to, like, right-click and run up. And that's not going to favor her. She, that's miss, you know, that's Radiant's a lot of DPS that she's attack. sacrificing in terms of attack speed when the BKB is active. So even if he does get roared, it's still not going to be the biggest damage output. And all of their other damage, except for the PA, basically, is magical. Like, they don't have easier. other right-click. So for now, I think a, a face-off between her, even if she, we were to give her a BKB, it would still favor Ush tremendously. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. That's something I've talked about, too. It's like, you don't think BKB is a good counter to Phantom Assassin just because she does all uh, physical damage, but without the Phantom Strike and the extra bonus... Uh, so the 130 attack speed for four attacks, she doesn't seem that impressive, like, to be quite honest with you. Um, she can still do decent attack speed with the uh, aura from the Beastmaster, and, of course, the uh, the terror, the wave of terror and the auras from Venge. I, th I still think that she's going to have a good time in fights, regardless if a BKB is out from us or not. And once she gets at level 16, too, it's just a whole different ballgame. Yeah. I think with another handful of items, she'll be okay. I feel like right now, though, it would favor Rush quite a bit. And I'm actually surprised Navi's not trying to test that theory. He back in to bottom lane. And wow, there's another kill onto the Doom. And Scandal just flat out found him and finished him off. Was watching bottom lane as I wanted to see who was coming in. But anyway, 15 to 11. And Empire looking solid right now. Up at top, they are going to go ahead and push on this Tier 1. At bottom, they've got two ready to push the Tier 2. Excuse me, this is the Tier 2 at top Dyer's as well. Top Here's a nice blast attack. on the way. And Sunstrike will catch Silent. So he's kind of low and, yep, has to back out just to stay safe. If Korok, or sorry, if uh, Fog gets an Ags right there, that's a dead Silent. Just to put things in perspective. And he's actually relatively close to it. He needs about, what, 2300, I think? So, I mean, I guess it's not that close, but for an Ancient Apparition. Who's this farmed right now? It's not too bad. Glyph deployed. No one is heading to top. Looks like they're just going to sack this and Empire aware of it. I actually saw, by the way, Solo drew a perfect box. He, he drew a circle like this. And sure enough, everyone on the side of Navi US was standing right there. He did have a ward down, so it wasn't like he was omniscient, but uh, still. Good tower and gold wise. It's actually back in favor of Empire after it having been Navi's lead for a while now. Yeah, this is just how Battle Furies work on melee carries. I, well, obviously, because you're never going to Battle Fury on a ranged carry. But you know what I mean? You, you can farm a lot faster with it exponentially once you get it. With just a little bit of space. And uh, I, I do like the ability, this uh, choice to go for, I'm presuming a Manta. I think it's really good against Lycan. It kind of disrupts his... Um, his single target ability and makes him a little bit confused about where he wants to go. Yeah. And not to mention, I mean, it's going to be hard for him to hit Ush anyway, or sorry, hard for him to hit Silent anyway because of the blur. So he really needs an MKB this game. Like, that's going to be very, very important for him. Uh, you know, I like my Battle Furies on my Skywrath Mage. No? Really good farming item. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm trolling you. <laughs> how it works on melee. It's like, nah, I'll take it on Skywrath Mage. We're good. The, the old Razor Battle Fury build. There you go. Gondar Battle Fury. He's a melee carry, right? Hard farmer. Do it, anyway. do it every once in a while. <laughs> I actually like Gondar mid more than I like him as a one position. All right. The little counter warning here. And now... The smoke out of Na'vi. They've got all five at bottom. 
They got to be careful here. They, they could end up losing a bit. They could end up taking a negative trade on towers. They're going to rush the tier one, and now it's going to be revealed. And they're, yeah, they're just going to go ahead and rush the tier two. I wonder what Silent's waiting on purchasing his item for. Maybe he really wants buyback, but I guess I guess Navi US, if they do wipe him, they do have the ability to push racks, but here comes an AA blast. Yep, Ice Blast going to connect. Now they're going to try to get out of the way. Ush is there, got caught with the Echo Stomp, but the damage from the Ancestral Spirit woke him up. Now he's going to try to rush him down. Scandal hit with the Ice Blast. Nice coil. He will end up snapping it. He's very quick, but Scandal actually has a haste rune up of his own. Behind that, we can see Solo ends up dropping as well. And now Ush running down silent. He will be able to blink strike to Yoki to keep himself safe. In the meantime, Scandal still hustling and bustling. Korok is right there. And they should be able to make it away. They end up only giving up one there. Radiant's and they actually kited Korok, or uh, Ush, excuse me, really, really well in that instance. Yeah, it was like blink, 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 blink every single time the the puck blink was up and every single time the Phantom Strike was up. So really nicely done. He actually goes for Yasha into, or casual Yasha into BKB, which I think is fine. He still has the Doom to worry about, which is the problem. I would still would really, really love to see him get the Manta. It's, I think it's really good on Phantom Assassin against single target heroes like the Lycan, but BKB is still fine. And they do they have a Vlad's yet on the team of Empire? They don't. I think that's also a bit of an oversight not getting that. I think it's really yeah. good for the PA. Maybe Beastmaster can get it after the Necro 3, but you can only ask so much from Scandal, who's had such a great game already. 4, 1, and 8 for him. I think his build is picture perfect. I, I wouldn't change it for anything. He's now going Solo for the Gonna end up being a free one. Wow, they actually spin the Doom on him. And Empire might be able to re-engage this. Sunstrike. Off the mark, Solo doubled back, and now Silent actually gets a nice crit on the Korok. Korok has to run, there's an Earth Splitter, it's going to get at least one, and it does get a Korok. They are kind of hesitating whether they want to re-engage. There's a Fire Blast on the Silent, two times multicast. Here comes Ush with a DD. Ush looking to just clean house if he can get on anyone. He uses his BKB even. They're trying the Tunnel Vision Scandal, and he's going to turn and spin the Roar just to buy himself some time. Behind that, the rest of the team is bringing up the rear, and it looks like they will have to disengage. So they do. Oh, no. Big coil as they catch two. Arise is going to try to run and couldn't get the crit. Now the blink ahead from Yoki. And they're going to be able to get at least way to. Ice Blast is on the way, though. Silent's going to be caught. And it kills the poor Hawk as well. Silent should not die to this. I don't think he'll have to get down to 140 HP. No, he's fine. So these fights getting very scattered. And I think Empire is doing a phenomenal job of not letting us tunnel vision them. I mean, he is, he, he could have done so much damage there. And he's almost got an assault cure ass on top of everything else, as a matter of fact. But they just really haven't allowed him to get on anyone. They're just disengaging every time they see him barreling towards them. Well, the roar is very effective against him. Like, he had the BKB active. When he doesn't have BKB active, the puck, uh, the puck coil is going to be really good. I would actually really like to see Puck go for an Ags, just for this reason. Like, it's, I think it's a four and a half second stun, even through BKB. I hear a sun strike towards bottom. It was actually going for Yoki, but he dodges it. Not, not really dodges it, just walks a different way. But um, yeah, it's really, really good play. And BKB, I don't even think that was used. Nope, he just picked it up now for Silent. And it was just barely enough damage onto the Invoker. It was actually the coil that went back in the base when he TP that killed him. Solo about to be wiped up. He actually swaps just to waste some time. Does make it to the high ground, but does end up dropping nonetheless. Taking a look at performers this game, that's solo six deaths, so having some struggles on the Vengeful Spirit for the most part. Eight and two on Yoki, who is, again, continuing to play as a standout player on this Empire squad. Five and four on Korok, not where he'd like to be, but better than most. Four and one, though, on Scandal. He's played a phenomenal Beastmaster this game. Three and two, always want to fly. It's kind of a grab bag after that. Just one, one, and three, though. Now there's a Doom on the Scandal. As Silent might re-engage. Yeah, he's going to work, but that is a tanky Ogre Magi. Didn't get a single crit and really needed it. Ice Blast guarantees one kill. And he's going back to work, finally able to get the crit he was looking for and gets a kill on Korok as a response. Hush, continuing to bounce in and out of the Roche Pit, hoping to find the big guy staring at him. And, oh, Yoki's going to get the Courier. Didn't have anything on it, fortunately for them, but the Hex is used on the Ush. Yoki finished his Hex not long ago. There's a swap solo. 
Can't stun him, though. A little late on the magic missile. Now he's going to BKB. In the meantime, Solo decides to blink away. Or uh, Yoki does. Solo, not quite so fortunate as to have a blink dagger, is being mauled by a wolf in the woods. And Empire ends up giving up two for two as they did get the Invoker as well. I didn't even see how the Invoker had died. I heard an Earth Splitter. That's all I, oh. that's all I know. But Silent actually got the kill on him. And the Stomp does connect onto us. Oh, no one in the in the area. Yep. So, a, a very nice play by Silent, just dissing out some damage and Dying was able to pick up the gem after um, after the Beastmaster died, which I think is very important. <laughs> Poor Fogged. He just shot an Ice Blast that had a radius about as big as, I don't know, about as big as a quarter of the base and still missed, even though he was shooting at the <laughs> Roche Pit. Like, seriously, like, Always Wanna Fly just walked right here and it was just Dying outside. Like, the radius had to have been, like, attack. this big. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, yep. But Silent, what's he going to buy? Yeah, I, I knew he was going to do this in the back of my mind. I was like, he's not going to finish that Manta. And actually, Roche <laughs> does respawn. He goes for a, a Basher, which is totally fine still. I mean, these, these are all very core items and nothing out of the ordinary from Phantom Assassin. But I still... It's awesome that Pug... Pug or not Pug, not Pug, Puck got the Scythe of Vice. It was effective, but it would be so good to get the Agonims to just kite out the, the Lycan even more so. They gotta decide if they wanna go in. Nope. Has to the Wasted a little too much time getting up. They knew it was there. And now they're gonna counter war. They got eyes on the wolf. Somebody has a gem that is scandal. That's another nice thing about the Beastmaster. He's a very tanky, very uh, very tough to bring down in most cases. Natural gem carrier. And we can see they're ready to put this Aegis to use Dyer's in a hurry. I'm with you, by the way. I would have really loved to have seen a Vlad's up Dyer's by now on anyone on the side gone. of Empire. Um, helps out the PA just so damn much. And there's going to be... Oh, what? He actually swapped himself on up. And now, Scandal caught with the multicast. is a really nice Earth Splitter, but they're going to be able to get way too behind that. Arise trying to get away, drop the rock, but it was on to a BKB. And now Fogged in trouble. Immediate buyback from Korok. He's going to get the Doom on Yoki. He will be able to survive that. In the meantime, Silent just chopping wood on the way to a double kill as he cleans up Fogged. Fogged did manage to get... The cold feet proc, and he's going to blink back in. Has the Aegis popped? This is Korok off of a buyback, mind you. It's three for three. And Ush there and might be capable enough on his own to ward them back. Doesn't look like Silent's too worried. BKB was used on both sides. They're resetting, waiting on creeps, and yeah, they're going back high ground. Ush off to the side. The Doom off to the left. And Solo comes right on up, stuns him. One big crit, the leak, and they get another, they do! <laughs> he just walked forward and died. Didn't anticipate Solo just subtly walking up the stairs with a, a magic missile. They're going to get the tier three. Now would probably be the best time for them to bail. There's going to be another... Yep, they actually got the Elder Titan with that Ice Blast, and they're still chasing down Solo. Silent actually got caught by it as well. He's going to throw out a Stifling Dagger, hurt a Sunstrike somewhere. But doesn't matter, as they do manage to extricate themselves with two. By the time all's said and done, pretty much everyone on the side of Navi US had dropped, so the fight recap not worth mentioning. That's a big lead that just got bigger for Empire. They're up near five digits, 10,000 gold, 10,000 experience-ish. Actually sitting right at 7,500 now, but well on their way to that five-digit figure. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Usher was thinking, just walking up there like that. Like, it's yeah. not even just a PA's ability to crypt, but he also had the aura from Venge, the ET aura, which was nearby, and the oh. wave of terror. I heard some. Solo's dead, I think. Uh, uh, no, not quite. Oh, hey, Fog doesn't have his scepter yet. I thought he did. Yeah, he'll be fine for now. I, speaking of Fog, he's actually got a scepter in 300 gold, so that would be a kill if he did, as you were right. But, yeah, I mean, he had all these ores around him. If You, you have to just expect if he does get a crit, you're dead. Not to mention he does have a basher, so kind of a feed right there. And Silent just continues to just pile on the gold. Can get an Abyssal if he wants to. I still think Manta is very, very good. Okay, finally he goes, no! He goes for a Lincoln Sphere instead! All right. Wow. Really doesn't want to get doomed. I guess it's fine because if you pop your BKB, nothing else can trigger your Lincolns except for the Doom. So in that sense, it's okay. But, uh, wow, I really thought he would get the Manta. But I guess I'm wrong. And I agree. Uh -huh. I think that Vlad's on someone needs to be purchased, like... Whether it's the Elder Titan there it is. or... Yeah, okay, very good. It needed to be yep. purchased. Yep. I, I think that's so, like, so core. Like, honestly, I think I would have liked it better 
if Empire had fallen back after getting the Roshan, gotten the Vlads, and then did and then pushed. I, I can't say it would have put them over the top completely, but I mean it's just so good on their whole team really, but on the PA in particular. Scandal's gonna get eyes on DD. We'll see if he'll give it to Silent. And Navi US feels like they had the wind knocked out of them, justifiably. Just heard an ice pass shot somewhere. Didn't even hear an ice blast. Didn't even see where it was headed to, but uh, the DD just bottled it up. <laughs> I actually <laughs> found Solo. Looks like Solo ate another one, but he'll be fine. That is the axe one, I believe. Yeah. So <laughs> Solo is not having too much fun these game, or this game against this global this presence. Make my life easier. And he has no more earned charges, so it's kind of annoying for him. He places a ward. And uh, you know what this reminds me of? That's actually a refresher, Ags, onto the Doom. Oh no, I hear a Sunstrike. Oh, I thought they had mid vision of him, maybe, but nope. <laughs> but this reminds me of the AA. I don't know why, but uh, remember when we saw that the Eastern game with the AA and the Terrorblade on the team? We were like, if you get an AA blast with Ags on anyone, if you just blink Sunder, they're dead. Yep. Next level stuff. Blink, Armlet, and Baggin. Yes. On your Terror Blade. So sick. So sick. Yes. Core, really. I mean, how could you build him any other way? Why would you? They're going to go high ground again. <laughs> and they're thinking about it anyway. There's a Basher up on Lycan. Roche back up in five. There's Smoked here, hoping to find someone napping and stepping out. But here comes the Necro Creep. I'm pretty sure he just got Vision. And I don't know who died right there. They have to know. There's no way they didn't notice amidst all of that. Korok's under cover of smoke as well. I think they just need to pick their shot. Usha's right up front again. And yeah, there's a ward. Swap back the ogre, actually. Now the multicast to follow, and no one went with solo. Now, finally, the PA does decide to engage. Ush has to run. It's way too much. There's an earth splitter. Doesn't catch anything. Now they're going to come back out down at bottom. And get Korok. Oh, God. That was... He just bought his Refresher. Didn't cast a single Doom. Yep. And, he's, and he has no buyback. He's down. Oh. He bought back last time. So that's two minutes. He's down and out. Ice Blast on the mark. At least for two. Sunstrike. Misses. I shouldn't say misses. Killed a poor hawk. And let's see if they can hold. They're going to have to do it without Korok for 60 more seconds. Cold Feet. Not gonna proc. There's an Echo Stomp that caught two. Silent by himself, just doing amazing damage. And Ush, oh jeez, he just got crit for 400 with a Stifling Dagger. That's a lot of damage output for l relatively little cost. They're playing this very cautiously. I actually feel like they should be bum rushing this a little bit. There's no big time initiation. On the other side, just one point into Wex for the Invoker means that uh, Tornado EMP is not a threat. Ice Blast, of course, is always a concern. The Lincolns does get popped that time, and Ush can do nothing but watch as another set of racks ends up dropping. And he's going to come back in. He's just going to get roared and blown up. Oh, my God. Really poorly played. Arise is next on the list. He's tossed into the air. That might buy him some time. Fog not going to stand up for long. Stifling Dagger, one crit will do him. 1,300 crit at the end. And just look at this PA go to town. Triple kill on the back of a 1,700 damage crit. And Empire takes the win. And I can't call it dramatic fashion. It was just kind of a grind it out kind of a deal. They just slowly built themselves a lead and took a, a couple of fights here and there. And then blew the game wide open. And with that, they walk away. Two to one victors. Yep, I won't say much because I know that we have a series here coming out uh, very quickly, but just well played by Team Empire. I thought their drafts were fantastic. Very nice uh, play of the Beastmaster, specifically from Scandal. And uh, yeah, I'm sure they're going in with high hopes in the next match. Yep, speaking of that next match, like you said, we're already way behind schedule and don't want to keep the teams waiting, so not going to be a lot of post game. So take a screenshot if you want to look at the stats some more because we're looking ahead now to yet another Empire series as they're going to be matching up with evil geniuses. We're going to be bringing you that series as soon as we possibly can. I'm AC, and that's Stroud. This is the D2L Season 5 brought to you by HyperX. Stick with us. We'll be right back.